Hi guys! So another month is at an end and that can mean only one thing, my end of month reading wrap up. So in today's video I'm going to be chatting to you about the books that I read in the second half of March, giving you my thoughts and reviews and just chatting more about the books with you, which is something I always enjoy. These are some of my favourite videos to film to be honest. If you didn't catch it, I did film a mid-month wrap up in March which reviewed all of the books I read in the first half. That will be linked down below but you know the drill, it's time for that second second half. Before we get into the reviews however I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video who are Skillshare. So if you're not familiar Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes and courses available to you on everything from knitting to meditating, from writing to video editing. Things you may already be doing but are looking to get better at as well as things that you've never tried before and that's one of my favourite things about Skillshare. In particular at the moment I've been really working hard on my creative writing projects and there was one video by Ali Novak on writing and editing, polishing your manuscript that I've been really enjoying because I have been writing or working on a fantasy book for a couple of years now and I'm kind of nearing the end of the first draft and been thinking about what I want to do in the revision process. This video is part of a series that Skillshare have done in collaboration with Wattpad, an online platform where people share their writing and I myself also use. I don't share the book I just mentioned now on Wattpad, I share other writing but it's a lot of fun and it was really nice to see that Skillshare had done some classes with them because I think they're really really encouraging and useful if you're trying to develop your creative writing. So if that sounds good to you and you'd like to give Skillshare and all of those amazing classes a shot then I will have a link down below that will give you an opportunity for a two month free trial. And with that said thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and now let's talk about the books that I read in the second half of March. So first let's talk about the only book I have a physical copy of here to show you and that is An Ark on the Wild Side by Tom Holt. Now, this is actually the last book I finished in March because it took me two weeks to read this book. I, like many of you I'm sure, have struggled a little bit to read over the past few weeks with everything that's going on in the world. My mind hasn't been able to focus entirely and therefore I started this book the day I, I came up to Edinburgh on the train and have been reading it ever since. I did finish it before March was out though and it was such a satisfying feeling to like tick that off and feel like yes I'd, I'd read a book. That, that felt like an accomplishment and it felt like the right book to be reading as well because it's a comic fantasy novel. It's full of like laugh out loud satire, parody, humour and all of that good stuff which is exactly what I need right now. Light but clever and I am a big fan of Tom Holt's writing. This isn't the first book I've read by him. He, he writes a lot of books in this comical fantasy and science fiction genre. This one in particular though really plays on those like other world fantasy tropes like plays on things that you see in Game of Thrones, in Lord of the Rings, things that you will recognise if you're a big fantasy reader and also make clear allusion to some of those fantasy classics but turns them on their head and has a lot of fun with them and I really really enjoy that. There's definitely something in Tom Holt's writing that will probably appeal to those who enjoy Terry Pratchett and Douglas Adams if you haven't read him before. In this book we follow a few different characters. We've got Mordak who's king of the goblins and he has radicalised goblin society. He's kind of introduced new political legislation, he's changing things up much to the dismay of many of his um, subjects and it's entertaining to watch to say the least. We also have his secretary who is an elf, we have a few human characters who've actually recently moved to the magical realm. So there's some science in this fantasy book which is very wacky out there, not real science but that allows for travel between different dimensions and that's a science that was introduced in, a, in an earlier series by Tom Holt called the U Space series but you don't need to have read U Space to follow the story in this, you just won't be familiar with the wonderful scientific powers of donuts to help you travel through time and space <laughs> as you would be if you'd read U Space before. I've read the first U Space book but it wasn't actually my favourite Tom Holt book surprisingly enough. This I enjoyed more, perhaps because I just have more of an affinity with fantasy than science fiction in general. Um, but because of that science we have these humans who have moved to the magical world 
because of like London property prices being exorbitant and then looking to sort of set up home in their retirement somewhere a little bit more affordable. So it very much plays on like contemporary political themes. There are definitely some nods to Brexit come the end of this book and it, it, it very much just plays on satire a lot of the time and I really enjoyed it. It was light like I mentioned, it was the right thing at the right time and I'm glad I picked it up. Sticking with the light theme, just before I came up to Edinburgh in fact, in the space of one night I read a graphic novel volume or comic book volume which was Giant Days Volume 3. So I had Giant Days Volume 3 out from the library and I would booked a ticket up to Edinburgh so I knew I'd have to go and return my library books that morning before my train and I really wanted to just like get through that comic book before I returned them. So I sat down that night and just powered through and it was exactly what I needed in quite a stressful time. Giant Days is such a cute, light-hearted, fun-filled comic book series. It's about a group of friends at university. The, the central characters are three women in their freshers year, so first year of university, but there's also two sort of central male characters as well that you get to know better as the comic books go on. And they're at university in the UK. I'm never sure if it actually stipulates what university or what city. If it does, clearly that didn't filter into my brain, um, but it's a very recognisably British, well English setting and I really enjoy that having gone to university in Britain. There's things that are just a lot more like relatable to my experience than when I read or watch things set at an American college for example and the stakes are just so low in this book. The stakes are what you would expect generally from that kind of topic. It's not full of danger or massive drama. I mean there are dramatic incidents but in the way that life particularly at that stage has some very dramatic moments that pass very quickly <laughs> and I really enjoy that about it. It's also a comic book series that I have grown more and more fond of as I have continued on. I enjoyed volume one but it didn't blow me away. As I've read on I've really um, learned to value what it has to offer as a, as a series and I'm kind of sad. I don't have volume four here with me in Edinburgh and, and can't go to the library anymore. It's just such good fun and exactly the kind of thing you need right now. It's humorous, it's sweet, it's relatable but never dark and I really enjoy the illustration style. I think it matches up perfectly with the contents. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this series and it's one I'd highly recommend checking out. I don't read a lot of contemporary literature really in that kind of setting without a slight twist. So that's also saying something that I, as a reader, despite that, still enjoy it. A book I'm pretty sure I actually finished in the first half of March and just completely forgot to review unless I literally finished it the day after I filmed my reading wrap up was How to Suppress Women's Writing by Joanna Russ. This is a non-fiction book that I listened to on audiobook. It just recently was narrated for Audible either last year or this year, so I pre-ordered it because I'd always been meaning to read it. So when I saw that it was being released on audiobook, I thought, yes, perfect. I love my non-fiction in audiobook format. I find it so accessible. It's like listening to a really engaging, long lecture <laughs> or perhaps a podcast is a more um, pertinent example but it's a way I really really enjoy consuming my non-fiction and this was an excellent read. I uh, It actually first came out in the 1980s so it has been a few decades yet still it's incredibly relevant slightly depressingly so because it is, as the title suggests, about um, the way in which women's creativity and writing in particular, whether that be in like academic spheres or fiction spheres, is dismissed, is valued lesser than, than that created by men and um, the ways in which institutions discourage women from getting into those fields and making it less accessible for them. There are definitely steps forward we have taken as societies and countries and institutions since this book first came out but unfortunately a lot of what it says still rings very true and I feel like I can say that coming from the perspective of a woman in both academia and the writing world and it's things I've definitely seen happen to people I know. It's mindsets and microaggressions and misogyny and sexism that I've read in studies and in um, like academic material that people just perpetuate without even realise they're doing it and for that reason I, feel, I still think it's a very relevant read and it'll make you angry but in the best possible way. When you get angry but that anger 
powers you and uh, powers you to do something about it and I really really appreciate that. I think it's a very accessible book. Joanna Russ has lots of different experiences in different fields in both universities but also as a published author. Joanna Russ was a science fiction writer. I've never actually read any of her fiction before but it comes very highly recommended. She's a like sort of classic of the 20th century and I would really like to read something by her even more now really since I've read that non-fiction book and I think, come to think of it, that my dad may have a copy of one of her books on his bookshelves so I might go and root that out and read that now that I'm talking about her again because it'd be nice to read some of her fiction. There's also in the edition I listened to an updated foreword which I think added a little bit to the overall reading experience that discussed how the book was relevant to today before you even got into the crux of it. I also learned some interesting facts about authors I didn't know in the past. I always love interesting literary and publishing tidbits from history. So throughout sort of like the 18 and 1900s this book talks about um, different experiences of female writers and the way they were treated by the publishing industry and the way women's writing was talked about and it's so interesting. It's, it's an interesting history of literature and publishing and academia and it's also a manifesto on women's writing and feminism and combines so many excellent things in that way. It's also very short so if you're a little bit intimidated by non-fiction or feminist non-fiction then it's quite an exception short one to start with, especially if you're into books, reading and writing, it will probably resonate with you as it did with me. And although I am saying that it's still very relevant today, I would definitely like to read something that was written more recently on the topic if anybody knows of something similar. Um, but then the last book that I read in the second half of March, we'll actually listen to again, was the audiobook called Beautiful by Juliette Marillier. So this is an Audible exclusive. It's a book or novella that Juliette Marillier specifically wrote to be an audiobook and is available on Audible. It's about seven and a half hours long so a, l a lot shorter than many of Juliette Marillier's books which is why I maybe call it a novella and it's a retelling of the fairy tale East of the Sun and West of the Moon. But what's interesting is that it's not from the perspective that you expect it to be. So it's not from the main man or woman, the love interests of this traditional fairy tale, it is from the perspective of the troll princess who is often cast as one of the bad guys of the fairy tale. And I really am not as familiar with this fairy tale as I am with others, but interestingly enough, if you saw my wrap up for the first half of March, I read another book that was a retelling of this fairy tale and it was not intentional. When I started listening to Beautiful, I started listening to it because it was a Juliet Miller book and she's one of my favourite fancy authors. I had no idea what fairy tale it was retelling, so it was so weird to suddenly be listening to a story from the perspective of a character who comes across as incredibly like selfish and evil in the other retelling I'd read and oh my goodness did I love this book. I mean it had Juliette Marillier's quintessential writing style, it was detailed, it was immersive, it was just beautiful. <laughs> Interestingly enough she is a beautiful writer and she creates such beautiful characters and explores such wonderful themes and she did it again in this in this story. We follow, like I mentioned, the troll princess of the fairy tale, but I would say after about an hour of the audiobook you're no longer within the original fairy tale. The events of the fairy tale take place in the first hour of the audiobook and then the rest of the story goes off and finds out what happens to this troll princess after the events of the fairy tale and I love that. I love those kind of spins on fairy tales. I love when the tropey bad guy becomes more complex and the authors explore um, their circumstances and their personality and uh, the things that might have happened to them and the opportunities that they might have had and I love that and Juliet Marillier did it exactly the way I would have wanted her to do it. She really gave me a new perspective on well, a fairy tale I didn't have much of a perspective on before, but still had a small one and I really enjoyed that. So those are the four books that I read in the second half of March, not as many as I read in the first half, especially if you consider that I'm pretty sure I also listened to How to Suppress Women's Writing in the first half of the month. But don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining, I don't think there's a right or wrong amount to read, you just gotta read what you feel like and can in the moment and um, I really enjoyed what I did read. So let me know if you've read any of these books or have any thoughts on them, how has your reading been going, how have you been feeling in general, just update me on you, your life and um, what, what you're sort of doing at the moment and how you're coping with everything. I'd, I'd really love to hear from you and chat with you in the comments down below. Thanks again to Skills 
Skillshare for sponsoring this video. It makes a massive difference in supporting this channel. Like I mentioned, they will be linked down below if you'd like to give their free trial a shot. And until next time, happy reading. I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys.